Hi, everyone. My name is Amine Anti. I'm a foreign conceptual photographer, and I specialize in conceptual and surrealistic on-location female portraiture. And I strive to tell imaginative stories through my art. For me, photography is first and foremost an art form, and I believe there is more to photography than just taking an image. I look at photography as a medium of expressing myself, embodying my creativity, and sharing my artistic vision. For me, photography is not just about a beautiful image, but about telling a story, conveying an idea, playing with associations. I'm a dreamer, and it's a way for me to share my worldview and passion for beauty. I never just take a photo. I use photography as a way of collecting material to create something that is not possible to capture. I use installation, props, and photo manipulation to create something that is possible to capture and to create the fi final art piece. I don't capture the moment, I create it. I've always been a creative person. As a child, I was good in paintings and crafts, and in 2009, I discovered photography and fell in love with it. Uh, I have no art background and no access to professional education in my country, uh, no mentors or fragged photographers. I had to learn everything by myself. But with the, passion, with, with the power of passion, determination, and dialogue on the net, I gained all my knowledge and inspiration through social media and online photography communities. And I was able to gain all my knowledge through there. And by trial and error and analyzing other photographers' work, I was able to learn and improve. When I got into photography, I was struggling for a while to find myself. Uh, like many of us, I tried different genres. I went through a standard phase of shooting landscapes, uh, flowers, my friends, my cat. But I was certain about one thing. I wanted to shoot something that would be different from everybody else. I never thought I would photograph people I met, until I met this girl who was into modeling, and later she became my friend. So she offered to do a photo shoot together, and that's how I got into portraiture. When I started to photograph people, I wanted to create something beyond just simple portraits. I wanted to show something that could not be seen, to convey an idea, to tell a story, to create an atmosphere and play with associations. So I started to experiment with different shooting techniques, using different lenses, uh, using props, uh, editing in Photoshop, and adding special effects to my photographs using compositing. A year and a half later, I decided to do a photo shoot with the same girl who got me into portraiture. And for some reason, we chose the hottest summer of 2009. And uh, we had some fun, and we created a series of cute but simple portraits. And that was it. Until the winter of 2011, when I decided to go back to this photo shoot and experiment a little, a little bit more with editing. At the time, my photography was not getting a lot of attention, so I decided it was time to change my approach. I decided it was time to think outside of the box. What if I can create an image by not just what I got in frame? What if I can create a photograph by mul using multiple frames, by transforming and creating my own reality? So I went back to this photo shoot. I played with editing in Photoshop. I changed a few things. I edited a few things. I stretched the background. I played with colors. And this is how this image was born. I think this image was a pivotal moment in my career because I realized this was it. This is what I was most passionate about to create. I posted this image online on some ph photography forum and it exploded. I got so much feedback. And this image defined my future career and my style and the genre of surrealistic female portraiture, which later became a hallmark of my work. And to this day, I have this image in my portfolio. My photography is storytelling. It all starts with the concept. So for me, photography is not just about an eye-pleasing image. It's about a message, an idea, a concept, an atmosphere, an association. And like. Everybody, like all the rest of us, I sometimes struggle with staying motivated and getting inspired to create those images. But how do you get inspired? I believe that inspiration comes from within. It can be triggered by a lot of different things, but this is something that comes from inside of you. It's a collection, it's a storage, a collection of your 
experiences, impressions, observations. They wait and they awaken at the right moment if you push them a little bit. Inspiration can't come to you if there's nothing in you to begin with. I constantly follow my favorite artists. I constantly browse through a lot of different art of different mediums. Uh, and then I try to look at things in untraditional and unconventional ways. I call it visual experience. So many different small things and elements around you can trigger your inspiration, but you need to be looking for it. I constantly looking for my inspiration. I believe that creativity is like a muscle and you need to exercise. Stimulate your vision and you will start noticing things. It's okay to get inspired by other incredible artists. Um, you just need to remember that everything has been invented before us. So we just need to find a way to translate and interpret things in our own way. So don't be afraid and give your permission to use the things around you to get inspired. So we just need to look, interpret, and transform. For example, I'm a big fan of dark art, and I'm a big fan of Tim Burton artwork. You're familiar with Tim Burton. He's a director and filmmaker. So a few years ago, I went back home to Ukraine, and I was reached out by this incredible, very passionate team of people who created this real life-size Jack Skellington, and we did this um, The Nightmare Before Christmas-inspired photo shoot. So this is how I got inspired by my fam favorite filmmaker. And this image on the right is just inspired by the pop culture of Halloween. Another way to come up with ideas is by building your association and concept around one of the image components. What are the image components? Those are the things that your photograph and your concept consist of. Things like location, props, model, wardrobe, hair and makeup, pose, lighting, color, emotion, etc. So you just pick one and you build your ideas and your concept around it. For example, you can come up with an idea by playing with associations. How to, how to do that? How to build an association around things? Usually, I pick up one thing, one image component, and I start building my idea around it. Let's do an example. Let's do an exercise. For example, for this one image, I picked up light bulbs, which is a prop. So I chose my image component, and I started to build my idea around it. So I started to think about it. And like, what can I associate light bulbs with? So I started my thread of thoughts. OK, light bulb hangs. It has specific shape, which is shaped kind of like a pear. A pear is a fruit, and it's a fruit, and it also hangs from the tree. So what if I change my fruit that hangs from the tree by changing it with light bulbs? And this is how I got this idea and built my concept. Or next example. I, a few years ago, I was traveling through Iceland, and I was working um, on my route. I was planning my trip. And I was doing some research online. And I saw this amazing location, which is a glacier and ice chunks lying on the beach. And I was so fascinated about it, and I decided I have to shoot something with it. So I started to think about it. OK, this location has glacier and ice. Ice is cold and white. And what else is cold and white? Maybe an ice cream. So what if I would be standing there on location, surrounded by glacier and ice cube, holding a giant ice cone, which is going to be stuffed with those ice chunks? And this is how this idea was born. I always shoot on real location and use real props. I believe that in a time of digital art and advanced Photoshop skills, we often forget that the best results and most believable results are achieved by using real props and creating real effects on your set. Of course, I do a lot of editing on my photographs. I do a lot of compositing. But still, I travel to real location, and I try to build and do as much as possible on set. This way, I stay creative. I keep my mind working, and I can experiment. And it also helps me build my images more believable and more realistic. And it gives my work a recognizable look. For example, a couple years ago, I was reached out by this girl who's just an amateur. She is into modeling. And she offered me to do a photo shoot together. So we decided to go upstate New York. And she was like, I have a car. 
and I'm from New York. I don't have a car. So for me, it was like a big advantage. And she, she was pretty. I really liked her. So I decided, why not? Let's do something together. And I remember we scheduled the photo shoot over the weekend. Um, we already planned everything. And I remember the, like, literally the day before the photo shoot, I was stuck. I had nothing, no idea, no whatsoever what I'm going to shoot. And I didn't want to cancel because I know I, I realized that everybody's busy. Everybody took time out of the schedules to plan this. And it was the day before, so it was a little bit too late to cancel. So I decided, what can I do? And I decided to wait to go to a Michael's Arts and Crafts store and hoping maybe I can find something there that I can use as a prop. And I was walking through the aisles, and I remember I saw this giant foam sphere, which is usually um, used for floral arrangements. And earlier in another department, in an Eden department, I saw this big, chunky yellow yarn. And it was around November, so it was fall. And then it hit me. I'm going to create a ball of yarn and a fabric out of the falling yellow foliage. So I got the foam sphere. I got the um, giant knitting needles, where, which were that actually that big. And uh, we got some tablecloth, plastic tablecloth, and spent night wrapping and placing the thread around the foam sphere. And the next day, we drove upstate New York and did this photo shoot. So I usually start with a sketching, sketching my ideas. Not always, but very often I start up to, it helps me visualize my idea more. And especially, oh, wait, that was not playing. Here you go. No, it's not playing. OK. Um, they were supposed to be behind the scenes video, <laughs> but for some reason it's not playing. Um, anyway, so I usually start with uh, drawing a concept. It especially helps when I work with a team of people and it's easier to share my vision with those people. So we went upstate New York, we did this photo shoot, we had some fun, we used a yellow tablecloth to build this fabric. Uh, of falling, uh, falling foliage and uh, use this giant ball of yarn. And this is what I got this day. So I got inspired by the random props I randomly found walking occasionally in the arts and crafts store. A couple years ago, I was browsing my Instagram feed and I saw this event in New York City. It was an art installation uh, where they placed all these lamps and shades in a specific art installation and with uh, city landscapes in the background. So I really loved it. I think it was really cool. And I wanted to shoot something. So I started thinking, what if I can portray myself as a lamp? So I went to Home Appliance Store, got this lampshade. I placed the speed light inside of it. And yeah, so um, I remember. It was raining that week. It was really raining every single day. So I went out to location. I waited for the lamps to get lit. And for my horror, I found out that that day, they're not going to be lit because the, of the rainwater and the installation was still wet. So it was a safety issue. And it was the last day of the installation. But the idea was for me standing in front of those, all those lamps and then be like glowing in the background. So. I decided to shoot my concept anyway because I was there. I was already, I, I already had all my props. And when I, I went home. And uh, I played a little bit with the editing. And I believe that everything happens for a reason. So I played a little bit with editing. And this is what I end up with. And I believe that it turned out even better. Because otherwise, if I had all these glowing lamps behind me, I would be lost. There will be no contrast. But this way, it created a very beautiful and nice contrast. In 2015, I was selected as lucky winner of Brown Collar Gen Next sponsorship. And as a part of a program, I had to create new content using their lightning equipment. I almost never ever shoot in a studio, and I rarely use studio lights and lamp pads in my work. So I was looking for a more creative way to use this lighting equipment. And I remember I was browsing their website, and I saw this sphere. It turned out to be a plastic sphere that you put a, a flash head inside of it, and it creates. It is, it is designed to shoot interior. So you push a flat head inside of it, and it creates a 360-degree light. What can you associate with a giant white glowing ball? A moon, of course. So I got it for some test shots, and then I use it as a prop to create a moon. 
But I didn't want to, you know, just use a model and the moon standing right next to her. I wanted to create some kind of a story. Start, started to think, what if she stole the moon from the sky and she's dragging it across the beach to take somewhere else? So we got to location, we shot everything. I put moon texture later on in Photoshop on top of my sphere. I got this uh, chain on eBay. It, it, it made of some kind of lightweight, non-metal material, but uh, it, it nonetheless looks very realistic. And later, my husband and model, they used their cell phone flashes to create these little lights, which later I used to um, I used as little pieces that are falling out of the moon while she's dragging it. And this is what I end up creating that day. So I was created by, I was inspired by the equipment. In 2017, I taught a workshop in Netherlands, and my manager sent me a folder full of different photographs of uh, available props and location that we can shoot um, and we can use. Uh, and I remember I saw this giant blue heart, which is an art installation in a little town Delft. So I absolutely loved it, not just because it's blue, but because it's very interesting. And I decided that I need to shoot with it. And um, so I got very excited. And I decided shoot to use these little hearts and pieces um, as a kind of like r fun association around this installation. So this is the final artwork. Some people say that she is heartbroken, and this is th these are her broken heart pieces, and maybe she's trying to pull them all back together into one big giant heart. Some people say that maybe she's just sharing a piece of her, her heart with someone else. For me, it's an interesting mix of symbolism and association. I love both interpretations, and I open, leave it open for the viewer. A couple years ago, uh, we were traveling through Iceland during the winter, and as always, I was planning our trip. I was doing some research online. And I saw this location, which is a very famous tourist attraction. It's a plane wreckage. It's an old US military plane that crashed somewhere around the 70s in Iceland. And it's still there. I mean, people still, I mean, people take pieces, little pieces, but it, it's still there. So um, what could I possibly associate a plane with? It could be many different things. But for me, it was vintage pilot outfit and a giant paper plane. Hoping the video will play this time. No, oh my god. <laughs> I've got so many cool behind the scenes for you today, but they're not playing. Um, anyway, we got to Iceland. We drove to the location. We left our car at the parking spot because you cannot drive to that spot, the dead plane wreckage. Um, you have to walk one hour one way. So I was walking through the freezing temperatures. Um, this place is a tourist attraction, like I already mentioned. So there were tourists walking around taking photographs. I built and brought a real giant paper plane. Let me go back to see the behind the scenes picture. So I made and brought a giant paper plane. I got some pilot, vintage pilot hat and goggles in a costume store. And I just wore a regular jacket and jeans and my shirt. I remember it was so cold because it was winter. It was around February. I was standing there almost crying because of the freezing wind. And usually when I take self-portraits, I either use a tripod and a remote control, or I ask somebody, for example, my husband, to help me. And I do the setup. I take a test shot with him in, in, in frame. Um, so I do the composition and everything. And then I tell him, stand right there and do exactly the same, but with me in frame. So he kind of plays the role of uh, shutter, shutter and trigger. <laughs> so anyway, I, I remember I was standing there posing. And at some point, all the tourists started to gather around behind him and taking pictures of me as well. It was so funny. I never, never saw any of those, though. But it was a fun experience. And here you go. Yay. So yeah, this is a little bit behind the scenes clip. So here's our rental car. Here's me getting ready. Here's me walking well, for one hour, one way. It's a pretty long walk. Here you see some tourists taking photographs. So yeah, this is, this is me, my camera. And this is me taking a test shot, trying to figure out what's the best angle, what's the best distance, things like that. 
yeah, and this is my giant paper plane. I had to fold it. Um, it came out a little, a little bit crooked, but it was OK. This is me changing my outfit. So you can see just regular clothes except for the hat and the goggles. So yeah, I got inspired by this beautiful location. The location was inspiration for me, and it was my image component that I built my idea around. OK, this is the final artwork. So all I had to do is Photoshop out a few people, smooth out the paper plane a little bit, and add a flying scarf. This image is called I Need More Space. And for me, it's uh, an attempt to play around the theme of uh, tra adventure and wanderlust, which is represented by space travel. And always remember where you came from and where your home is, which is represented by the flowers that create oxygen in the helmet and help her breathe. So I don't have a studio. So I usually shoot in my apartment in Brooklyn in my living room. So I shot this in my living room with this setup. I created the space costume myself. It was not as complicated as it might seem. So hopefully this video will play. So I got the acrylic sphere from Amazon. Uh, so it's not very heavy. I expanded the hole a little bit to fit her head, to fit the model's head. I drilled a little bit ex extra holes to help her breathe. I bought a regular silver jacket, again, from Amazon. I sew in and painted some additional silver details. You can see me. I, I, I don't sew, but like. I have an idea. <laughs> I used real flowers, so this is my our setup. Use some continuous lights. So yeah. So there's a little bit speed speed edit of how I created these images. So all I did I just recharged the suit a little bit, um, gave the reflection a round shape because I want it to be a reflection of the moon, a little bit of skin retouching, and you know few tweaks here and there. OK, and this is the final artwork. Or for example, this one. I created a few years ago back in Ukraine. And I remember I saw this artist online that creates um, dolls. And he represents them in different creatures. Unfortunately, I don't remember the name, or I cannot show you the pictures because of the copyright reasons. But I saw this doll who had branches, tree branches, instead of her hair. And I absolutely loved it. I thought, oh my god, I want to do something like this, too. So I interpreted it my own way. And this is how I created this image. And she is supposed to be a tree that is cold. It is snowing. Her uh, leaves fell off. And she is waiting for the spring. So I created the headpiece out of the wire. I spray painted it. I used golden uh, foil to create the leaves. Or this self-portrait. Again, I shot in my apartment in Brooklyn in my living room. And uh, this, is, this artwork is called Anya Eyes. And for me, it's, it's a very deep uh, self-portrait, but it's also a very interesting play of words because Anya's eyes, Anya is my name. And I'm surrounded by all of these eyes. But also, it is translated as flower pansy from Russian. So it's a very interesting uh, for me. Um, as a concept. Uh, so I use this light setup. I use just one light and a reflector. And I got this setup from fake flowers. And I got these um, plastic doll eyeballs from, th from the internet. And just did this little setup. Even though I use props, and they're very important, but also post-production and photo editing is essential in my work. It helps me be more creative, um, convey my ideas, and match everything to my artistic vision and create dramatic effects. With some Photoshop magic, I transform, enhance, and bend the reality. A couple years ago, I was traveling through Faroe Islands. And again, I was doing my research, looking for some interesting, unique locations. And I saw this one, which is a little village, very remote little village. And these houses, they are actually covered with uh, grass. They used to be a sheep farm, but now they're a museum. And I was uh, so amazed by it. So I was like, what if I can portray myself as uh, the, the one who's actually holding a hammer and a roll of moss, a roll of grass, and covering those rooftops as a builder? 
So um, I didn't, I could not, so I wanted to use a hammer, but I thought it would be really weird or even not allowed it to take it into my luggage. So um, I took just a stick and I took this roll of moss, but it was not long enough. So later in Photoshop, I composited in the hammer, I expanded the roll of moss, and I added a few additional houses. Oh, for example, this one. Um, so we built this teapot out of the shipping box and uh, papier-mâché. And also, it was heavily raining that day, so it was ruined by the water. And uh, we quite, didn't quite have a big budget to create a really nice big pot. But thanks to the editing and photo manipulation, I was able to make, make it look more appealing, more pretty, add some additional smoke. and. Uh, some people say that it reminds them of an Alice in Wonderland. And I'm pretty sure somewhere in the back of my head, I was inspired by this book. And that's how I created this theme around smoke and tea and teacups and teapots. So I'm originally from Ukraine. But in 2014, I moved to the United States with only a suitcase, my camera, and a dream to become a professional artist. Moving to a foreign country across the ocean was very challenging, and it it had a really great impact on me. Because moving to another country with no opportunities, no job offers, no connection was really hard and challenging. And for a while, I was struggling and I was um, going through dark times and depression. I was always kind of drawn to the dark art, but that period of my life emphasized my love for darkness even more. I was overwhelmed by language and cultural barrier, and I was really struggling to interact and reach out to people. So I started to show self-portraits. And I shifted to cool tones. But at some point, I decided to embrace my depression, and I created what I think is the best work I created so far called Butterflies in My Stomach. You all know this expression, butterflies in my stomach. But it's not just be be about falling in love. Butterflies in my stomach is an anxious and nervous feeling inside of you, inside your stomach. So for me, it's a way of representing my dealing with anxiety and depression and my attempt to, my attempt to become another person and is a metaphor for me of dealing with those dark times. Anyway, in, in the technical aspect, I... Again, I shot it in my apartment. I wanted to use real props to help me build my composite more realistic and believable. So I was struggling to find this skeleton for a while because it was somewhere around March. March. So it was long after the Halloween. But eventually, I found it in Target, and I ordered it. I also got a new top, just a regular new top. Uh, I got these butterflies from eBay, which are just uh, made of feathers, so they look pretty realistic. And I shot my skeleton. I shot myself. I shot all the additional butterflies. Here's a little video of speed edit of me creating this composite. So I shot the skeleton. I composited it inside of it, inside of myself. I used the so I cut. I used the to new top. I cut it, uh, the hole inside of it. I stretched it, and it was a good stand-in for torn skin. So, in total, this. This process took about four hours, which is not a lot considering all the work I did. But because I used the setup and I used um, all the props with the same, same lighting, same setup, set, same settings, it all came together like a puzzle. And it was very easy for me to composite all things together and match everything together into one seamless piece. I also shot every single butterfly separately with a di different distance from the camera just by holding it with my hand. And it helped me to create more depth and dimension to my image. So inspiration is a very complex process. And there is no easy and simple formula how to find it. I really hope I gave you some tips today, but you will need to figure out your, what works for you in your own way find how to find inspiration. Photography is a canvas, and on canvas, everything is possible. Your limitation is only your imagination. Thank you so much. Feel free to follow me on social media. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Anya Ante. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, we're going to go dark.